I'm Denny Schuler, uh, Oregon graduate, 1969. I participated uh, from 64 to 68, came back to Oregon in 1986 and coached them through the 1992 season. Coach Denny Shula. Come on guys. He always had some just like a little crack in his voice. It was it was almost like he was the man before Jay-Z even got it. Man it taught me the uh, deep defensive back techniques. Cause I was a mess when I first got to <laughs> uh, when I first got to Oregon, I was out, man. I don't know what technique I was learning, but it worked in high school. And I remember first practice, he's like, That's that technique's not gonna <laughs> work here, son. He would just go to work and at practice he just would dissect these teams and their offenses and just he was the mastermind behind the defense and to me he was brilliant the defense loved him i remember anthony newman always talking about Schuler, and and i didn't really know denny as far from a coach standpoint the, the insides and all that but i know the guys loved him and they were willing to perform and do whatever it took to make that coach proud the brains behind that defensive scheme I know Ali Odi added, you know, some more to it, uh, made it more innovative to this modern time. But uh, you and Ali Odi, man, Danny Schuler, you guys are like the best defensive coordinators I've ever seen in my life. Uh, very good defensive back coach. I respected him well. He recruited me along with uh, Coach Ali Odi and Coach Brooks. They came to Compton to get me and for that I respect them. We didn't fraternize too much offense, defense. We didn't fraternize too much with the coaches because we were always going at each other in camp. But uh, great guy, you know, always had his players ready to play. He, he made sure if you're on the field, you're gonna know your stuff. Yeah, so he, he, he stayed, really stayed on us. It was, which was real good. I don't remember ever coming to the sideline and saying, yeah, but they did this or no, but the, he didn't do that, he did, never. It was, we knew exactly what they were doing. Shula was the man. Coach Shula, he, he understood the game of football. and he, he taught us a lot of the X and O's and where to go, where not to go. And um, very, very cute uh, individual when it comes down to the game and the sport of football. I grew up being a big Husky fan. I still have a Husky scrapbook from my from the 50s somewhere in there. So I grew up actually wanting to go to Washington. Now, the only problem is that I wanted them. They didn't want me. So they didn't they didn't recruit me. Uh, Washington State did. Uh, incidentally, Jim Shanley, great Oregon running back, uh, recruited me for Washington State, and uh, John Robinson recruited me to Oregon. And uh, one of my my dad used to take me to Husky game. One of the first the game I think I saw was Oregon versus Washington in 1957 or 8, I'll bet it was. And uh, first of all, I, I loved Oregon's uniforms. I mean, I just thought, to my God, those are cool. And I noticed they had some little guys out there running around. I knew I wasn't going to be real huge. So my dad kind of pushed me to, even if Washington had recruited me, I think he wanted me to go to, to Oregon. Because Oregon at that time, Len Casanova was the Chip Kelly of the 50s, the late 50s, and had some, he would take his uh, firehouse four backfield, for example, and he'd flank one of those guys out there. So I had two people in the backfield instead of three, uh, in addition to the quarterback. So at, even at that time, Oregon was considered a wide open offense, and, and uh, I figured I had a better chance to be a part of all that. So that was, uh, that was my reason for, for going to Oregon. Well, it's really easy for me to reflect on that because I look at it as a coach. And I will tell you, first of all, more than anything else, one of the reasons Oregon's winning right now is because they got great players. And those early years you talked about with Cass, they had guys like Mel Renfro and Bob Berry and Larry Hill, some really great players, and um, Wilcox, and I can go on and on and on. And when I, they had guys like me and Ken Woody and, you know, some guys that that weren't nearly as good. So I'm going to say we, I won't say they, I'll just say their recruiting fell off quite literally. And uh, 
those were all good coaches. Those coaches all went on to coach some in the NFL and make a name for themselves. Oregon's always been a hotbed of coaches uh, and, and had some great staff. But, uh, but to me, that's, that's clearly, I think, the uh, Hayward Field was a part of that. You know, we needed something new uh, to get us going, and that clearly, clearly helped us when we did build Watson Stadium. But I'll look at it quite simply and say that Oregon, when I was playing, did not have the players that they did before or after. Cold in there, and oh, it was, no, it was, uh, it was not good, not good at all. But, you know, the big games, uh, we always went up to Portland to play, you know, yeah. so you played your, your Washington State's, uh, you know, Oregon State in Utah's, San Jose's, you're going to play them at Hayward. Mm -hmm. But it was actually a beautiful field. The field I love better than the field out at Autzen. I really think the field itself, it was a grass field, but it was like a putting green. It was just a beautiful field until the rain started. <laughs> so it was a beautiful putting Yeah, then it got a little, little soft, but, uh, but it was actually a beautiful field, but, but clearly it was not a, not a stadium that, that you could say we belong in the pack. Well, I remember that stadium being built in the summer of 67, mm -hmm. and they had a bunch of bulldozers uh, in the, that earthen stadium. And, uh, you know, it went up, uh, I won't say overnight, but I, I want to say the cost of that stadium was just a couple million dollars. Two million dollars. Like Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, you can't build a concession stand for, for two million dollars. So what they did uh, is, is phenomenal. And Fresno State actually modeled, took yeah. that example, and I'm not sure if there were any others, but it was a, a, a great venue. It's still one of the great places to watch football, you know, because you're right on top of them and whatnot. But it was, it was really neat. And I, I still remember the first time I ran down the stadium. I was, I don't know, I was, it was like running down Husky Stadium for me as a kid. I was just as excited. So that was, that was really neat uh, to have Austin Stadium. Yeah, having a stadium of that size was, was really nice and, and really beneficial to, to the recruiting. And I'm sure it helped Cass. And I know. And you know the next step, what happened is, is then Bill Byrne mm -hmm. wanted to put a dome stadium and, and whatnot. And so that, that was huge in those days, just trying to envision what we are going to be. Not what we are now, but what we're going to be. You know, it was, uh, it, I still remember that the first game, the Colorado game. You know, mm -hmm. the, that, was, that was a really fun game. Uh, We'll never forget that game, of course. Uh, the DB that lined up opposite me was a guy that made fame in another sport, a guy named Hale Irwin. I found out years later, Don James told me that Hale Irwin was the DB over me when I caught that first touchdown pass. And well, first of all, the thing I would say, it's not like they elevated one of the coaches, Jerry Farr, was elevated, and many times, just as we have today, when a coach is elevated, you retain a lot of those staff members. So that was the case. That was the case then. Now I think if a new coach had come in from another school, then we would have completely cleaned the house. But uh, when Jerry is elevated, he, he kept uh, a lot of those coaches. I mean, the George Seiferts and and Bruce Snyder's, that was a lot of really good coaches on that staff and uh, you know all went on to make a name for themselves. I remember John Robinson told me this one time and it stuck with me and, I, and I've always, I've repeated because I really believe it's true that he says the best coaches are the ones that had to scramble the hardest as players. And that was certainly true of John Robinson, it was true of Bruce Snyder, it was true of George Seifert. I can go on and on. I mean, uh, Larry Bird and Bart Starr didn't, didn't, didn't end up being great pro coaches. And for whatever reasons, sometimes, I mean, it came too easy to form or whatever, but, but I know I can speak for myself. I had to work like heck to, to, to try to get on the field and to take every, to try to learn the game, and I think that was one of the reasons I was drawn into coaching, is that uh, had to learn the little nuances of your position to, to get on the field. But I, I think a lot of that went on with uh, with the, with uh, the, the guys that you have mentioned that, that coached Oregon, and clearly it's it's been a phenomenal run of people that have gone through there. 
No, and, and I think a name that gets overlooked many times is Jack Roach. Now, Jack Roach was his defensive coordinator. Cass ran the offense, and Jack ran the defense, and Oregon had great defenses in those years and uh, led the country in, in many statistical categories, as I, I remember in a few of those years. And uh, so it wasn't just, it wasn't his wide open offense, it was also they played great defense. And, and, but the thing about Cass is, is I think you go beyond football. I mean, he used to call it the Oregon family. And I think we've lost a little of that these last few years as we've grown, as, as, which is going to happen to anything that grows like Oregon has grown. But th that was a wonderful feeling to know that Cass was there and he was going to take care of you. Now, you better straight and narrow because, if, you know, if you didn't, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, but he he called it his family, and uh, I think that we I think Rich Brooks, my years there coming back coaching, tried to enhance that, and and I think that's always been uh, I think that's always been one of the the strengths of Oregon. The the players have stayed tight, and you'll see that with all these various reunions. You get these guys coming back because it was a great bond. But it all started with Cass, and he was he was the the one man that, that kept us all together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I, so he knew. He knew. Was, was that just like out of spite in your career path? Or? <laughs> well, he clearly didn't want me to. Uh, he Because uh, he knew that, you know, there's highs, but there's also lows. You know, you're going to get let go a few times, and that clearly did happen. But, I, I mean, I'm so glad that I got into it. It was it was, it was, it was a bonus uh, picking up a paycheck every every month. I mean, it was just a, it was a great run for me. But, uh, no, it, it, it's that's true. He... He, uh, he didn't want me to get in football, but I'll never forget John Robinson. Uh, I stayed on as a GA after spring of my senior year, and I sharpened pencils and carried chairs around and whatnot. But I thought, geez, this is kind of neat. I kind of like this, I mean, what they were doing, not what I was doing. But uh, I, Robbie asked me, he says, what do you want to do in 10 years? And at that time, I'd signed a teaching contract to teach in high school. And I said, well, I think this is pretty pretty good. And he says, well, don't leave. He says, stay here as a graduate assistant because that's your best chance to get into college football is to be a graduate assistant. So that's what I did. And, you know, two years later, I'm at Idaho State University, a you know, 25-year-old assistant coach. So that got me started. But uh, no, I, I no regrets. A wonderful, wonderful profession. Just me, you know, working with these kids, and I love the X's and O part of it. Just love that. It was so much fun. I, I'll never forget uh, Shreveport uh, the, in the, the pregame party the night before. We had a big, big function. The band was there and whatnot. And some little old lady walked up to me, and she was dead serious. But she says. She said, I can die now. The Ducks have gone to a bowl game. And she was dead serious when she said it. So, so yes, the, the emotion, uh, if you talk to a lot of these Oregon coaches, even today, I think that if you say, what bowl game did you have the most fun at? Uh, they may say the first Independence Bowl. We stayed up all night as a staff and went and got on the plane the next morning. Yeah, I mean, it, it was just, it was really fun because we knew we were building something and, and there's nothing more fun than building something. But clearly we we realized we were all going in that direction. That was really a lot of fun. To be quite honest with you, I never envisioned anything like what is happening today. So I, I, you have to applaud what, what Mike Bellotti and Chip Kelly have done. I think it's tremendous. Now, certainly the, the facilities have helped, but when we got this thing started years ago, our weight room was a little, little bitty dungeon and you know, it's well, a stadium. Said so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't have the biggest, and, and those were fun days building something. And and I do appreciate that that you say that we we got it started there. I like to think that maybe I'm being selfish by thinking that, but it was small increments early on, and and now it clearly is uh, is something special.